Hello everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger, and today we're going to be talking about this potential future Gabrielle out over here with an 80% chance of forming over the next seven days, and then also over the next two days, a 50% chance. So our chances are continuing to rise that this is going to develop. Also, believe it or not, or maybe unexpectedly, just given how these hurricanes have been acting over the past couple of years, Hurricane Kiko has strengthened to a Category 4 hurricane, which means some changes to our forecast for Hawaii. You can see there's a little one over here that's a tropical i mean a category one hurricane right off the land of hawaii so gotta watch out for this storm still for hawaii definitely need to be keeping an eye on that back over here in the eastern pacific we are still watching hurricane lorena this is going to be traveling up to the north dying over the baja of california but that moisture is going to snake its way into arizona and new mexico we're going to be giving an update on that as well and that cooler and drier air is officially really starting to dig down and push into the united states we'll be going over who's going to see some cooler temperatures and some drier temperatures over the next couple of days also this frontal boundary will be causing some severe weather today so we'll be also going over the latest on that but before we get started make sure you hit that like and subscribe and also hype this video if you have some hype points it does help out the channel a lot and also we are on the way to 100,000 subscribers so if you do end up enjoying this video hit that subscribe button but without further ado let's go ahead and hop right into it so checking out what will likely be future Gabrielle potentially over the next day or two we can see that it does have some decent convection around the center. You can even see some of these thunderstorms are starting to broadly rotate as well as we do have an elongated area of low pressure inside of the storm right now. We come over to visible satellite and you can see that little broad circulation a little bit better and it's not rotating very fast so definitely not super organized just yet probably not a surface low pressure system but with all of this convection eventually we are going to see this thing start to organize and as you can see with our national hurricane center cone you can see that this thing is continuing to stay pretty far to the south i mean by the next update we could have barbados dominica guadalupe maybe even saint martin within a cone of uncertainty so definitely got to keep an eye on this storm impact to the caribbean seemed to be a little bit higher with this storm than it was with Aaron. and a lot of our models are actually continuing to shift down to the south we'll be looking at some of our environment here in just a little bit before we get into the broad scale atmospheric environment that is this storm is going to be heading into i do want to take a moment to just kind of set the stage here with our sea surface temperatures you can see that where the storm can go pretty much from the caribbean to maybe near puerto rico to maybe north and we still have some uncertainty there we're talking about 30 to 29 degrees celsius all the way around this area so as long as that shear environment and there's enough moisture around this storm is still happening we're probably going to see this thing strengthen into a hurricane around this point so we do have to keep a close eye on it really don't want to see any land impact of the storm and i'm sure almost all of you except for the select few agree with that but yeah those water temperatures are going to be enough to sustain tropical storm to hurricane activity as this thing continues to move off of the west so let's check out those humidity values around the storm as you can see it is currently still dry to a little bit moist you can see that that dry air is still off to the west and the storm is still battling it right now but as you can see because of this little frontal boundary that is draping down and some excess moisture is kind of pulling out in front of the storm it's kind of the perfect scenario for this storm to kind of push into some more moisture and really not battle any dry air and as you can see here the gfs model brings this thing pretty close but it's to the north of the lesser antilles so again still some possibilities that this storm will miss and then also look another storm back over here that we might have to be talking about in the future it doesn't really seem like moisture is going to be too big of an issue but let's go look at our steering environment and i want to highlight a couple of differences here between some of these models to kind of just show you guys a couple of scenarios including the worst case scenario with this storm as i push this forward you can see that high pressure system hangs out here our low pressure system starts to develop as we go into Monday as we head into Tuesday start to see a little bit more of an organization there with our high pressure system developing a weakness right here so technically the storm could take a little bit of a jog to the north but then it kind of re-pushes that southern side of the high pressure system further down to the south you can see that 591 line right here and that's going to continue to keep our storm a little bit further to the south now one of the things that some of these models have been indicating is that not only does this high pressure system kind of keep this storm a little bit to the south initially but watch this as I push this forward we actually get a little bit of a low pressure system developed over here in the southeast 
and that could help kind of slingshot this high pressure system. You can see up here, little low pressure system up here. That's also going to bring a high pressure system up here to the northeast with that low pressure system down there. Both of these things kind of working together. The worst case scenario does seem to be those two things pushing this storm into land. I mean, we could be talking about impacts to Florida all the way up to North Carolina, maybe a little bit further north. This timing is off. Again, we're looking at 300 hours out. But I just want to show you this is the worst case scenario. And this is probably the only way that we're going to get landfall is that this very specific series of events happen because as you can see this low pressure system then is going to be ejecting by the time we get to Thursday on the 11th that's going to drape a frontal boundary down to the south but our storm really isn't that close so it's not going to really get caught by it and this could kind of leave our storm behind and if that does happen and we get this high pressure system to kind of work in behind that with this low pressure system all the flow is basically going to be tugging this storm into land so we're gonna to have to be watching these patterns here it does seem like our models are hinting at a scenario technically being possible again this does not mean it's going to happen this is just one model run we're going to see a lot of shifts we're going to look at the ensembles here in a little bit so you guys can get a better understanding but this is a scenario that we do have to watch out for and things that we have to monitor when is the timing of this low pressure if it's a little bit later then it might have more influence and bring our storm a little bit further up to the north if this is a little bit further north that ejecting high pressure system will, might also be a little bit further to the north and if we don't get this little low pressure system develop in the gulf then this will probably track to the north and the weakness of the high pressures here so again still definitely more probably more scenarios that this curves off to the north but a very specific solution here from this gfs and a pattern that we're gonna have to watch out this is probably going to be the only way that this storm impacts land now i want to compare this and contrast this to one of our best case scenarios this is the canadian model and as you can see it also forms our storm at around wednesday september 10th has that high pressure system over here but look at this a lot weaker of a low pressure system leading to not as big of an ejection of a high pressure system out over in the Atlantic and then we start to see our low pressure system really track up to the north as it strengthens so you can really see the timing of this low pressure system and how much this high pressure system ejects into the Atlantic and how important that is going to be for the track of our storm so those are the things that I'm going to be monitoring and we'll be giving daily updates to make sure that you guys are in the know of what these two systems are doing and if we have any model agreement of that low pressure let's come over here to the euro model as well and one thing I'd want to note is that the euro is is also kind of hinting at one Caribbean landfall impacts, believe it or not. And then also that low pressure system existing in the Southeast. See, as this pushes through, that low pressure system is a little bit weaker. We don't really get a big ejecting of that high pressure system. And in fact, it's not really there, but just that presence of that low pressure system will tug this storm, keep it a little bit further to the West. And then look at this, keeps it further to the South long enough for this high pressure system to its North and West to re-strengthen and again, keep our storm to the south. And the Euro model comes all the way through the uh, Bahamas and into Florida. So as you can see, the timing of all of these, you see that low pressure system, another low pressure system comes up to the north, brings that high pressure system, kind of blocking its path to the north and then skimmies off to the west. So again, these are the patterns that we have to watch out for. Again, we're talking about 300 hours out. These patterns will shift around. You know, if we get the timing just right and this low pressure system is a little bit further south, this is going to get ejected or far higher pressure systems don't line up so again still a lot of uncertainty but so let's go look at our ensembles and just get a, a the average now of what is possible we've seen the best case scenario we've seen the worst case scenario but what's the averages so here's the eps mo members again 50, about 50 model runs all at once to kind of give you an average and as you can see all of our members are down here by the time we get to september 6th and as i continue to push this forward you can see that our models are especially on the euro if we come back into earlier runs you can see like this was about a couple days ago you can see a lot further to the north and now look at it it's a little bit further to the south so we're still getting shifts to the south so our track is shifting to the south so we kind of got a new track here where we got to watch out for maybe some more caribbean impacts due to this initial high pressure system just being up there that's going to keep our storm down to the south especially as it remains a weaker storm but we could be talking about tropical storm to hurricane force impacts here either in the Le northern lesser antilles to the central lesser antilles and maybe over there near puerto rico so again you guys need to be keeping an eye on this storm but as i push this forward you can see that right around as we get to september 12th we start to see a big disagreement between our models start to form you can see how wide and spread apart these are that just signals uncertainty and as we continue to push this in the future you can see that some of them go off to the north and actually a couple of them do go off towards florida south carolina and north carolina so we definitely have higher chances for u.s impacts with the storm showing up on our models with 
our latest runs. Does that mean you guys need to start preparing? No, again, this is 348 hours out. We are still kind of stretching the definition of accuracy here. And in fact, there is no accuracy in these models that far out. It just kind of shows you a broad case scenario, kind of shows you who needs to be watching the storm and watching new forecasts. Now, if we come over to the GEFS model, you can see that it also has this storm a lot weaker initially and then doesn't really try to form it until later. And you can see actually most of the GEFS models bring this away from land still. A couple of them come close, maybe a couple more models for there getting pretty close to Florida as well. And that's probably what the GEFS deterministic run was hinting at. But overall, you know, not as organized of a system here on the GEFS ensemble. So definitely still some disagreements in our ensembles and terms of the strength and also the track but bottom line is is that their scenarios where this stays out to sea kind of like Aaron and in fact with Aaron at around this time it became pretty clear that the dominating scenario was it was going out to sea right now though with potential future Gabrielle we're kind of split on some of our scenarios we have a couple of scenarios that bring this thing up to sea and then another couple of scenarios that could again are, that are equally as likely at this point with all the uncertainty that bring this into the eastern coast so this is not like Aaron where you know you're gonna have people stretching the truth saying it's gonna go out to sea and that's it or and then the people that are really, you know, bad actors stretching the truth saying it's going to go into land. There's actually two legitimate scenarios with the pattern that we currently have happening right now. And it's all about timing. Coming back over to the Eastern Pacific, you were talking about, you know, the possibility of Hurricane Kiko maybe trying to be a little bit of a diva and trying to overperform in terms of its intensity. And it has, you know, we, we didn't call for it in our forecast, but we said there's always a possibility that these things do that. And they do. As you can see, Kiko is now a category four hurricane with 140. 45 mile per hour winds and a four and 944 millibar central pressure. So this is a lot stronger than we initially thought that this thing could become. And as you can see, this thing is going to continue to track off the west northwest. And then as we get to the end of our forecast cone, you can see that we have a category one hurricane possible just off of the coast of Hawaii. Now, this should be in a stage of rapid weakening. So there still is probably still more of a likelihood that this is either a strong tropical storm or just a tropical storm as it comes close to Hawaii. But generally, overall, we need to be watching this storm, especially if you live in Hawaii. It's a strong storm. It's a little bit stronger than expected. That means it's going to have a little bit more moisture. And if we come over here to the GEFS model, you can see it's a little bit underestimating the storm here by at least 20 millibars. So again, add about 20 millibars to that. That could be close to hurricane strength or strong hurricane. But look at this. You see our storm is pretty close to Hawaii there. And if we come over here to our moisture, which is one of the things that we're watching, you see this storm is completely shrouded by that dry air. But again, if this is going to be around 988 to a 990 system, it's going to be battling that a little bit more effectively, which means we could see some wind impacts. And then look at this, maybe another storm after that behind this and another close approach to Hawaii. So Again, this is the one that we're going to be focusing on. This is Kiko. So we're going to be keeping a close eye on it. Let's go check out the Euro. European models also underestimating this storm, but believe it or not, it has tracked to the north a little bit more. So that's good news. Let's hope that becomes a trend. And also our hurricane models uh, are doing that as well. But you see, this one actually captures the intensity pretty well. And then it has a 994, probably a strong tropical storm or a weak hurricane as it makes a close approach also to the north. HFAS-B, though, with a much different understanding. Look at this. This would be a hurricane just off the coast of Hawaii. So again, a wide range of solutions still as we are still around five days out from this impacting or coming close to Hawaii. This model right here is definitely our worst case scenario with most of our models saying up to the north. So we're still watching for some flooding potential, still watching for some power outage potential as well with Kiko. But as of right now, we still not 100% certain what this storm is going to do. And back over here, here is Hurricane Lorena with 75 mile per hour winds and 987 millibar central pressure. You see this thing is going to track up to the north and Mexico not going to really be an issue for the United States at least in terms of tropical impacts but that moisture is going to make its way up as I continue to push this forward you can see that our system moves up to the north bringing some extra maybe outflow boundaries into Arizona maybe triggering some sort of severe weather or flooding but look at this our latest model run actually kind of spaghettifies our tropical system for a while and then eventually that moisture does pop up into New Mexico as that slowly transfers its energy off to the east so it looks like we're looking like sometime around like the 6 at around 4 p.m., at least in the afternoon hours where some moisture could pull up and we could see some flooding issues out over here in New Mexico and Colorado. Now, in terms of severe weather for today, folks, we do have a large marginal risk extending 
all the way from northern Alabama going up into New York. You see that we got that frontal boundary where that cooler and drier air is filtering into the United States at the current moment. And also a little secondary boundary further out to the west. But this is the one that we're really paying attention to, at least for the southeast going up into the north. But yeah, as you can see, our frontal boundary is going to be ejecting into the area tonight, or sorry, this evening, afternoon. And you can see that we do, are going to have a line of organized storms really all the way from Virginia up into Pennsylvania and New York. It does seem like there's probably not going to be enough forcing to have any really mature cells out here. So the chances for tornadoes are going to be on the lower side. But as we go into 1 and 2 p.m., we're going to have some damaging winds up here in Pennsylvania and New York. Definitely some thunderstorms also back over here near Virginia, Radford, Johnson City, and just north the Churchill could see some more isolated severe weather, but still some chances for some damaging winds and some hail. And again, I'm still not completely ruling out a brief spin up down here, although the chances are quite low for that. And just probably not enough forcing, but you know, if you get a severe weather alert out here, I would just pay attention to it, at least notice it. If you see the storms, look out for little dangly bits underneath them, just in case. Again, super low chance, but definitely worth kind of glancing at it just to make sure there's not going to be any tornado warnings. But yeah, this uh, frontal boundary is going to be continuing through this area by around 5, 6 p.m., 7 p.m. Then look at this back over here where our marginal risk is over here near Iowa and Minnesota. We have another ejecting trough. Not going to be as much instability back here, but some thunderstorms and severe weather could be possible north of Sioux City near Mankato as we go into around 7 p.m. before that quickly dies off. And by the time we get up to around 12 a.m., all of our storms are kind of fizzled, but we could still have some pretty heavy rain up here near Vermont and New Hampshire as well as that frontal boundary continues to push off to the east. Then as we go further into the future, you can see that boundary pushes through this little low pressure system, kind of gets spaghettified. Not a whole lot of instability out here, so not really expecting too much severe weather. We could see something on the 5th back over here near Clarksville in Kentucky as we will have some pretty cold temperatures aloft a little bit of returning instability so could see some severe weather some damaging wind events down there general thunderstorms back over here near Missouri and Arkansas as well and then kind of just a kind of a continuation here so maybe some flooding issues could be possible uh, with some of these storms as we get a couple of trained systems over and over bringing some heavier precipitation down there then as we move throughout the week you see that a lot of that starts to fizzle and we're pretty much out of our range of accuracy here so yeah that's what we're expecting for severe weather in terms of temperature changes as we move into the fourth up uh, peaky heating hours here you can see that we're going to be talking about 60s to 70s really all the way from south dakota going into missouri also kentucky going into parts of virginia and north carolina as that frontal boundary moves through with that rain could be even in the low 80s to 70s out here near wichita and tulsa oklahoma and kansas still warm over here in dallas and fort worth but that will change as we go further in the forecast also in the southeast still pretty hot over here uh, in the west coast as well but some pockets of some cooler air like over there near montana and wyoming exist i continue to push this forward you can see our cooler air starts to push down a little bit further to the south especially here into kansas uh, st louis indiana going over into michigan as well but still some heat hanging on down here in the southeast almost all the way over there into new jersey and massachusetts as i continue to push this forward you can see that cooler air really pushing down to the south i mean this is guys 4 p.m on the 6th you can see really 80s to 70s, maybe even some high 60s out over here, maybe even getting into the 50s in Kentucky and West Virginia and some of the higher elevations as that another cold front propagates around across the United States. So definitely a big cool down out here. And another thing I want to note here, look at this coming over the dew points. You can see that it is still going to be a little bit humid down here in the southeast, but up here north of this line, it's going to be dry and basically humidity less, which is nice. We need that or you guys need that. I need that, but it doesn't look like it's going to come down uh, into my area anytime soon, which makes me sad. Yeah, you can see that drier air does continue. Oh, wait, maybe a little change in the models. Southeast could get on, on, on some drier air as well uh, on the 7th. So I like that. So yeah, generally that cooler air will work its way through the United States over the next couple of days. And it's going to stick around in the eastern part of the United States for a while, while it's still going to stay pretty hot over here from really Nebraska going all the way up into Canada. And yeah, I'm not really seeing much of a warm up until we get back into the 11th. As you can see, we can start to see a little bit more widespread heat all the way from the southeast up into the Canadian border down into Texas there. Yeah, thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Care RB needs to be watching out. Hawaii needs to be watching out. Arizona and New Mexico need to be watching out. And also some folks over there near the Appalachian Mountains. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe and like button. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.